interview here from the Globe magazine, which is fairly interesting. We'll just speak about that a little bit. Um, it's interesting the kind of backlash Lena Waithe is getting, right? From the Masters of None and a few other bits she's done, she always seemed a bit of, like, of the darling of the, you know, black Hollywood, I'll say in that regard. But somehow in the last couple of months, she's not been the flavor of the month, especially on black Twitter. I think the main reason has been because of her response to the whole Jason Mitchell controversy. He was another guy embroiled in some sexual harassment claim and she essentially didn't want to say anything. I think she did a, she did a bit of an oopsie by commenting and not commenting i think she just should have said flat out look this guy's my friend i worked with him on set it's i don't i don't feel like i can be objective in this issue so i'm going to decline and not comment on it i should actually have been completely fine but she tried to explain herself around it and kind of rationalize and intellectualize the issue when you know essentially this guy jason mitchell did a bad thing people accused him for it and she remained silent for the most part and her being a female in hollywood people looked at it as if you know she was kind of just um not being a, what they call it uh an ally in the fight against sexual harassment. But she said something quite illuminating on this interview that has been received the wrong way on social, which has been interesting, but I thought was fairly evident and fairly, you know, a normal thing that a lot of black people would identify with. But, you know, here we go. This interview is with um, The Globe and Mail, and it's titled Lena Waif and Melina Matsukas, Matsukas, right, on Queen and Slim, this new movie that she's put out now that's been receiving mixed reviews. I think, you know, what's said, Black Twitter, uh, Black Twitter said it's horrible and people on Instagram are saying it's amazing. So, you know, you probably have to watch it yourself and make your own opinion about it. But it says, uh, being black is beautiful, but it's also traumatizing is the headline. But this first couple of questions are the ones that I really want to highlight on that kind of, I would say I identify with and I think a lot of people would identify with even if they don't identify with her as a person, they would say that this is a true statement, you know, of the black diaspora as I like to term it in the united states and also this is another indication that we should probably stop with the identity politics and stop kind of grouping ourselves because this is another case of the e of the left eating the left right eating itself in the case of like how woke can you be um how much identity can you ascribe to your success and how far are you re really willing to go in order to kind of represent your culture and it should never be like that it should just be about you know again re representation is important um, making sure you have a voice in the room is important but also the idea of getting on with your work and just being good at what you do is also important so that you appeal to the, a mass number of people not just one group of people um, I think now we're at the stage where black movies are being made um, they're not probably being made at the rate that we'd like them but they are being made but they should be now being made for the wider public not just for black audiences because that's the only way we're going to be able to make more because you know by and large unless you're living in africa for the most part most black people are the minority in most western countries so by that very reason you're going to need other people who are non-black to support the movie in order to kind of allow the production company to see that oh this movie is making money to then give you more money to make more movies because as surface and as ignorant and as naive and as unaware as some of these production companies are the one thing they do listen to is money if you make money in the box office, they'll give you more chances. If you don't make more money, they don't care how noble your cause is, it's going to go down and why. And that's why you're seeing a lot of these movies like Charlie's Angels, uh, the Batwoman uh, TV series are suffering because essentially they're only around, they only exist because they serve to perpetuate some kind of political agenda. They don't, they're not there to just merely kind of some, slightly represent, you know, a different face in kind of superhero movies or in kind of female cinema or in kind of the male dominated cinema industry. Fair enough. They're there mostly to serve a political agenda, but they should be there to kind of represent women and also primarily to tell a good story. That's what it should be. It should be 10% representation. Look, look at this diverse cast we got. The woman's the leading actress is Asian. That guy is this, the, 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 fair. But then the most of the reason why I should watch your show is because it's a good show, standardly. It shouldn't just be because it's a, a, sh a TV program or a cinema movie that kind of bashes men. That's why people should watch it because that can only go so far. Uh, but this interview, going back to this interview, this real quote kind of stuck out to me. And again, I, re I kind of uh, related to it. But a lot of black people on, people on black Twitter didn't really take it uh, that way at all. And I'm now kind of burying Lena and she's now become the enemy of evil, which is very interesting to see. It's the following. Um, um, uh, the, quite, the interviewer asks the following. I know you've both worked together in the past. Can you tell me what draws you both to continue to collaborate? Um, 
Matsuka says the following I tend to like works that are by writer directors and I'm very much not a writer and Lena will tell you herself that she's not a director to find someone who can write in your tongue who can translate your values onto the page that brings such poetry to their work every time that's able to straddle the lines between genres and be able to create something political but at the same time entertaining and commercial which again is very difficult to do and again I don't really again i think we're moving away from the whole political theme um, agenda driven movies especially ones that are primarily directed by people of color or as whatever you may term it and now we're slowly but surely getting towards the point where we're going to start doing just movies for movies sake not you know no more slave movies no more movies about you know um white guilt none of that sort of stuff just great movies that happen to have a very diverse cast that aren't just you know your quintessential white superhero movie that's where we should be heading towards and hopefully with the more success these ladies have and other directors have we're going to see that happen more often um Da, 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 political but at the same time entertaining and commercial that's who i am that's who i am as an artist if i had a pen if i had a talent it would be this woman wait answers the following um i don't think i could be a director that Melena is she's a combination of so many things even racially the fact that she's black she's greek she's cuban all these things make her such a specific storyteller and what else i love about melania melina sorry is that she can be the at the hood party and vibe she can also be in the front row at gucci and milan and know more about the designs and the influences at that's coming down the runway than half of the people at the front row i don't have that gift although i'm gifted in my own way i've seen all about eve more times than anyone can imagine and also can obsess over my best friend's wedding and love jones and then watch and just another girl on irt all in the same day and get the same joy and fulfillment from those works i think that's the reason why my voice is so weird and confuses people sometimes because i study sorkin spike lee and spike jones and that makes me a little different than a person who only has black influences i guess people took that the wrong way right as if she's trying to say black influences are just quite based but i don't think it is i think it's just the idea that she's representing a different kind of voice in the black cinema world right it's probably different to um has her black experience different to tyler perry's black experience which is why I don't subscribe to these ideological um, identity politics based arguments and motives when it comes to creating or putting yourself out there. I think for the most part, representation is important. I guarantee you that part of the reason why I love Steve McQueen is because he's a black dude. I didn't know who he was previously. I remember watching the review show on BBC when I used to live at home. I was obsessed with that, watching all those programs. And he happened to be one of his first, I think, exhibitions of the one where it's a cowboy kind of repeated. I think he's doing one of the exp- a retrospective, actually. Yeah, I think it's. Um, Steve McQueen retrospective I remember seeing that on the culture show and then being engrossed by him following him on interviews and stuff and then via just him representing something that I hadn't seen before in contemporary art being a, a, a black man a straight black dude for instance I then dug deep and found out he was an amazing gifted artist and directing his own right but he wasn't necessarily pushing himself to me as a black director he was just pushing himself to on TV as Steve McQueen right and then you dig in deeper and you find out oh shit he's actually amazing what he does and i think that's where we should be as a culture should be as a race because i think we both we all represent too many different varying levels of experiences and and in life i could say for myself like i grew up in ends i grew up with people who have you know been sentenced to 30 years in prison but i was i was i used to play on the road but i wasn't from the road i wasn't you know i wasn't doing bits i wasn't doing moves um i wasn't doing that stuff i didn't I never jacked anyone i might have been around when it was happening but i wasn't egging it on i wasn't part of the process whatever right so that is a different experience to a guy that was actually like selling day in day out on the strip on the corner do you know what I mean like pushing stuff like going up county lines going country all that sort of stuff that wasn't what i was doing but i know people that was doing it so my experience is different i went to you know a prestigious university um I'm, you know, if I read most of the times, I, re- I write different things. I'm interested in different topics, whatever it may be. But it's I'm st- it's still a voice in a black community. It's not it's not the voice. It's a different voice, and I guess that's what we all different represent. But the best way that we can push ourselves forward is by kind of uniting under that umbrella, saying that we all have different various different influences and different sort of experiences, and then kind of presenting that, relaying that back into our work. The worst thing you can do is maybe try and pretend like you're from the road, especially if you're a black person, just because you feel like you want to connect with your community and then put something out that's terrible. You have to speak from your point of experience. That's it. 
and then hope that just by you representing yourself in the truest possible sense, you're then going to then inspire a whole generation of people looking up at you based on your skin color. But then once they dig in deeper, like I did with Steve McQueen, they realize, oh, you're just amazing. And then we kind of uplift each other that way. Because I think if we start eating each other alive and start saying, oh, what she's trying to say, that black people are base and that she's more cultured because she used to watch all this stuff, all about the family. That's not the way we should go about stuff. Let's just, let's just understand that Lena's black experience is different from your black experience, but it's in the human experience, as are all humans. You don't, you don't expect to see all, I don't, I, you know, you couldn't get more, you couldn't get two different white people if you tried putting an English person and a Russian person together. They're, mo they're both physically might look the same, fair skin, light eyes, straight hair, but they're both completely different human beings. Family values, uh, the way they carry themselves, Whatever it may be, they're completely different, but they look completely similar, right? Same with some black people. Like, it's, you, you hear a lot of times when people go back to Africa, they always say um, Africans can spot Europeans from a mile off, right? Straight away. Why is it? Like, there is a difference between a, a European, a European black person and an African black person. The same would have to say with an African American and African. Like, they're probably, they're probably more different than maybe a, Geordie, uh, Jersey, Shore, a Jersey Shore girl and somebody from Sicily, right? They're, they're, they're on paper might be Italian, right? But you know, maybe influences and life experiences wise, they couldn't be more different, but they both represent a particular kind of community and they're both doing different bits and pieces and exposing the world to different sides of their community in order to kind of further bring everyone up. And I think that's where we should be. So again, I don't really see a problem with this whole quote. I know it might rub people up the wrong way, but it's a, it's a truth, isn't it? Like we've all grown up with people. Like I've, you know, I was a big example of it where most of my life I spent especially in school, in secondary school, I was always in the highest sets, especially in my school because it, you know, it was full of delinquents. Most of the delinquents in my school happened to be the kids that were black or happened to be the kids that were Asian, wherever it may be, right? So most of my classes where I was in the highest sets, I happened to be surrounded by people who were Asian and white. So most of my Asian and white friends were into different kind of bits of music, which exposed me to that side of things. But then when I went and played football, or I went out on a weekend and we went to go try to draw girls in Ilford and Romford, it was mostly with all my black friends. So I had those two different worlds that I was kind of straddling every time i was in school so on one side i was listening to limp biscuit and the other side i was listening to grime every single day and that was what i kind of carried into my adulthood these kind of but i think that's what makes me special that's what makes me an interesting person that i'm able to kind of have these different levels of in interest at the same level not that i'm trying to play up to one side no these were things i was doing i was going to deja vu i was um you know recording sets on my mix on my flipping uh, tape recorder i was making my own sets i was trying to mc i was djing i was doing all this stuff and i was also going to metal concerts or listening to stuff or watching people live and whatever it may be or skateboarding whatever it may be all those kind of quintessential quote-unquote white things i was doing too because i was daring varying levels of influence and if i was making movies then you would see that in the movie that i make you'd see that in the work that i produce it would be it, it would be tangible you, it would be it would kind of jump off the screen jump off the canvas you can see that straight away okay cool this guy's got different levels of interest that he's coming up with and, and it's no it's no more better than a person that's just come from quote unquote black culture it's no more different it's just a it's no more be, it's no better than that it's just a different way of expressing it i don't think that's a bad thing and i think again like i said we can't eat ourselves if we want to get further as a culture as a race as a community we have to kind of unite and allow each part of the community to represent themselves in the truest possible way and not be shamed into thinking no you're not black enough you're not you're not whatever enough that isn't the right way to go about things um and again just to end it here matsuka spirits the following i think that speaks directly to the black experience right we're not a monolithic group which i said we are multicultural in the truest sense of the form we're all connected by blackness our roots are slavery and very much africa and that it translates different ways depending on where people landed but we're all connected and this film speaks to the african diaspora and all the ways in which we see it yeah so i love that man i really love that um and yeah and, and wave says this is probably my favorite episode of masters of none actually the thanksgiving one about the about how she's the diff, different ways of coming out which are really cool the lebanese thing she says the following uh, melania and i melania and i always say to each other that it feels like we share the womb you know we feel like family and that's part of the reason that i think we bonded so quickly the thanksgiving episode of masters of none which a lot of people gravitate towards was a moment that was so eye-opening the way people reacted to it was like whoa what did we do here Talk it, talking, Masuka says, following, taking that episode and being able to watch, uh, being able to work with this story uh, that I had never seen on television before a black lesbian mum coming out to her mum and black girl growing up in New York. I knew that part. That was me. So I could see myself um, in parts of her story, even if it wasn't mine. And that's how I feel about all the characters that she writes. And it's the same thing that Queen and Slim, Queen and Slim is all of us. 
while I was writing this film, I just knew that Melania had to direct it. Okay, but definitely, definitely worth checking it out. It's a really cool interview. I'll link it again in the show for you guys to see. Queen of Slim, I think, is out now in cinema. Support them and check them out. They're doing they're doing great work and really trying to push culture forward. 